Hello ladies and gentlemen, Root Beer here, and I'm just as excited as you are to take a look at A6 on our 2017 senior paper. In the diagram, the triangle has side lengths 6, 8, and 10. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to guess 6, 8, and 10 here. And now these I recognize as giving me a nice little right angle. The, these are Pythagorean triple. Three semicircles are drawn using the sides of the triangles as diameters. Okay, so the center here will be the center of that triangle, center here. But I can also tell the radii. The diameters are twice the radii. We just a little, make little notes as we read it along. Okay, uh, using the sides of the two triangles as diameter. A large circle is drawn so that it just touches, fancy word for that is tangent, uh, each of the three semicircles. What is the radius of the larger circle? Okay, so we need the radius of the big circle. So, just touches or tangent, when I think radius and I think tangent, there's only really one thing I can think to do, and so we're going to do that. Let's get the last question out of the way, that A5, finish, get rid of that one. And um, uh, look, look, let's draw our picture here. This is going to be kind of hard because I'm going to have to do a lot of circles. Actually, you know what might be easier? Let's draw the big circle first. Eh, close enough. Sort of draw a semicircle in here that just touches. Mm. No, I can't. Uh, I can't make that one work. Uh, let's, I guess, draw the triangle first. As a note to anyone out there planning on writing math contests, the diagram just needs to make sense to you. So, you know, the fact that I'm trying to be such a stickler about this and draw somewhat decent pictures, don't worry with, you know, don't waste your time on that. As long as it works and makes sense to you, you're good to go. So there we go. There's, there's my horrible picture, but I'd probably be satisfied with this on a test. Okay? Put the point uh, on the contest. Put my points of tangency up here. Maybe my um, um, uh, centers there. Uh, four, four, three, three. Ten splits into to twos with fives. Okay, and let's put the center of the big circle. I don't know exactly where it is. Let's say about here. Okay, now we have points where they just touch. And so when I think that, I think radius, I think points that just touch, I connect the center of my circle up to points of tangency. Although we're not being tangent to a line here exactly. We're being tangent to another circle. But here's what's interesting. And this is true for other circles in general. If you take one circle and you have it just touch another circle, and this is used in a number of questions out there. They have a common line of tangency. It's the same line of tangency, but more than that, the radii, when they connect up to lines of tangency, radii make right angles. Okay? But then you get a nice straight line. Okay? Tangent circles have radii and the point of tangency all on a line. Okay? Usually you see it like this for an external uh, uh, tangency. Like usually there's a very nice question that comes to mind where you got a big circle and some smaller circles and they're all sort of mutually tangent and stuff like that. But this also works inside. And I think that's what we're going for here. If you have a circle and you got and they just touch inside, the same rules apply. If they have the same point of tangency, the same line that's tangent to one circle will have to be tangent to the other because they can only intersect at this one common point here. But that means that the radii uh, are both perpendicular, and so they both have to be sort of the same line. So the point of tangency and the centers uh, all lie on a line. So not only that, so I introduce these red lines if we connect these points of tangency up to the centers, I guess my center was a little wrong. 
it also needs to lie on this line. We almost had it down there with this one. This circle center, touch the point of tangency, they all lie on a line. And that, I think, is going to, going to really help us out here. And I remember two or three years ago, we were actually proofreading this one. Uh, no, more than two or three, like five years ago, I think, when we were printing, uh, we, we were, the little group I tend to work with, we were um, sort of proofreading, you know, checking, oh, can the questions all be done? Are there typos? Is there language that could be improved? Uh, the three of us that tend to work on these together, we were all absolutely baffled by this. We completely forgot this little this little rule. So as I say, it usually pops up like this, but it's it's still true if the, the one circle's inside the other. Okay, so these centers, these points of tangency, and the center of the circle that we want, all lie on a line. Great. Okay. How does this help? Well. We having a nice relationship here is great. Now we want what the radius of the big circle. So maybe we'll call that R. But because we got a line here, I know this has to be four. It has to be the radius of this small one. So this little bit here is four minus R. This will be, or sorry, R minus four. This will be R minus three. This will be R minus five. Okay. Just because this has got to be three. This has got to be five because the centers line up. So this portion of, of the radius line has to be 5. What's left? R minus 5. Great. Okay, so now I can just sort of look in at this triangle, and I don't have to worry about the big circle picture. So nice thing about having a right angle here is we could pretend we've got some coordinates. So a distance 3 from 0, so we'd be at 3, 0 here. Uh, this would have to be 0, 4. And now, well, gee, how do you get... What are the coordinates over here supposed to be? Well, you could work this out and say this is 6, 0. This is 0, 8. And the center should be the midpoint. So it'll be 3, 4. There are other ways to see this. But there we go. We got these points here, and we've got the imaginary center for our circle. Let's call that HK. I don't know exactly where it is. Okay, but uh, what we can say is HK must be distance R minus 4 from this point, it must be a distance R minus 5 from 3, 4, and it must be a distance R minus 3 from 3, 0. Okay. Now, how does that help? Well, what point is, you know, how do you find a point in common if all you know is the points that it's a certain distance from? So if you imagine we're out here with 0, 4, 3, 4, and 3, 0, how can I find a point that's sort of the same distance away? Well, if I knew r minus 4, I could sweep out a little circle here of radius r minus 4, sweep out a little circle of radius uh, r minus 5 up here, and sweep out a little circle of radius r minus 3 out here, and it would have to be the point that is common to all three circles. So we could, using these coordinates here, that are really suggested by this nice little right angle, that's really the only reason to have a right angle triangle there, because you could use a scaling triangle and still do this sort of a construction. Having the right angle there suggests to me, okay, maybe some coordinates and solve for an R. Okay. So we know the circles, let's see, uh, x minus 3 squared plus y minus 0, let's say y squared, equals r minus 3 squared. x minus 3 squared, y minus 4 squared, equals r minus 5 squared. And x, uh, just x squared, plus x minus 4 squared, equals r minus 4 squared have a point in common, have one point in common. Okay. So I'll maybe call that point x, y. Okay. Now I've got three equations, three unknowns. I really just care about the one unknown. So if I can find a shortcut to figure out r, that would be great. Okay. So what can I do to, to handle these equations? Well, I could take 
And if you want to stay organized, or if this were a written question, you're practicing for a written question, a good way to stay organized and to help people read things is to label them one, two, three. I notice one and two both have an x minus three squared in them. So let's get rid of them. Let's do two minus one. Now those will cancel out, and you'll be left with, uh, so over here, r minus 5 squared, r minus 3 squared. That's a difference of squares. Okay, it'll be uh, r minus 5 minus r minus 3. And then r minus 5 plus r minus 3. And over here, it's another difference of squares. It'll be y minus 4 minus y times y minus 4 plus y. So over here, the y's will cancel out. You'll get negative 4, 2y minus 4 is equal to uh, negative 5 minus negative 3. That'll be negative 2, and then times 2r minus 8. So we could say 2 times 2y minus 4 is equal to 2r minus 8, or 4y minus 8 is 2r minus 8. So 2y is equal to the radius. Great. I could then say, all right, y is r over 2. And I suspect we can do the same thing and get x in terms of r. And then hopefully we can use one equation to solve for everything else. Okay. So uh, let's, let's try that out. Let's do equation 3 minus, or let's do equation 2 minus equation 3. We're canceling out the y's, so it should all just be in terms of x's. Okay? And so you'll get uh, x minus 3 minus x, x minus 3 plus x over here, and you'll get r minus 5 minus r minus 4, and then r minus 5 plus r minus 4. So the x's will cancel out, you get minus 3, 2x minus 3 here. R's cancel out, minus 5, minus negative 4, minus 5, plus 4, so that's negative 1. And then 2R minus 9 here. So you'll get uh, 6X minus 9 is 2R minus 9. When you, when you multiply the 3 in and divide both sides by negative 1, cancel out the 9's, and uh, you'll see X is going to be one third r okay so where can we go from here well i know x in terms of r i know y in terms of r take one of those equations doesn't matter which one so x is uh, one third r minus three squared y was one half r minus four squared and that's r minus 5. Now I have a single expression in terms of r. Okay. And that's really all we need to go with there. I just wanted to double check. Yeah, the 8s cancel out. Just weird that it was a 2 here. I was expecting something else, but oh well. Uh, okay, so one thing I could do is I could multiply both sides to get rid of this 3 and this 2. That's certainly a possibility. Uh, so if I multiply both sides by 6 squared, I can get a 2r minus an 18 squared in here, a 3r minus 24 squared in here, and then a 6r minus 30 squared in here. This just gets rid of fractions. I, I'm not the biggest fan of working with fractions. But you might prefer not to do that to get, keep the numbers small. So we'll get 4r squared minus 2 times 2 times 18. 
72r plus 324, and we'll have 9r squared, 3 times 24 times 2, that'll be minus 144r plus 576, 24 squared, and then that's going to be equal to 36r squared minus 2 times 6 times 30, that's 360r plus 900. Great. And you might notice, oh, 324 and 476 add up to 900. 18 squared plus 24 squared. It's a nice little Pythagorean triple again. Really cuts down on the work. So what have I got over here? I got 13 R squareds minus uh, 72 plus 144 is minus 216 R. And that's equal to 36 R squared minus 360 R. So let's subtract 13 R, on, R squared on both sides. So 36 minus 13, that's going to be uh, 23. 23 R squared minus, and then 360, bring the 216 over to the other side, so minus 144 R. And this factors really nicely. Take out a factor of R. Now R can't be zero, that would be way too small in terms of a radius. So we conclude, all right, 23r minus 144 must be 0. r is 144 over 23. Now, just as a quick sanity check, when we go back to it, we've got to remember this is a radius. This is an actual length. And these lengths, r minus 4, r minus 5, and r minus 3, they, well, they are lengths. I just said that a moment ago, but they are lengths. So they shouldn't be negative numbers. Now, really quickly, 144 divided by 23 is about 6.26, so... Yeah, at least it's big enough. It makes sense. It's not a ridiculously huge number. If I, you know, if it was some something big like 17, you would know that that's way, way too big. But yeah, just a little bit more than four, five, and three makes me think that extend it a little bit and you'll be sitting somewhere inside this triangle. Makes sense to me. All right. So there we go. 144 over 23. Now the key parts to this result were knowing that tangent circles have the point of tangency and the centers lie on a line, and that works regardless of the setup of the circles, which, as I say, when we were proofreading this all those years ago, that you know that threw everyone off. We were a little, little thrown off by that one. Okay. Uh, other things, we switched back here to analytic geometry. Okay, that is to say, we introduced coordinates. The thing that really screamed that at me was, oh, you got a right angle triangle. Why? You know, you could have, could have done it with any sort of triangle. But the right angle triangle sets us up for some very nice and quick coordinates. And then we're just solving a system of equations. And it wasn't that bad. Uh, now, you, you could have just expanded this all out and canceled things out. The difference of squares, I think, maybe just helps a little bit. And we had three variables, three unknowns. This is not uh, out of the realm of possibility. And it turns out to be a very nice equation. I thought we might have to do the quadratic formula at the end, but no, there we go. 144 over 23. So there we go. That's A6. It was a, definitely a worthy challenge there. Um, so, but that's, that's it for part A of the paper. All the five mark questions are done. Up next, we're going to look at B1 and then B2. And then finally, the hardest question should be B3. Uh, but we'll take a gander at those. Those are the written questions. So if you want to give question number one a try, feel free to do so before joining me. Uh, until then, take care and have yourself, of course, a wonderful day.